Hey everybody. Um, tonight I'm going to go back to using my 6SC. So that is the 6 inch Solistron SE telescope, Schmidt Cassegrain telescope that I've got running on the wedge. And what I'd like to do tonight, what I'd absolutely love to do actually tonight is to take an image of a reflection nebula called M78, also called Casper the Friendly Ghost. If I am not mistaken, I might be. This nebula has been kicking my butt ever since I've tried imaging it years ago. And the reason for that is that I have Bortle 8 skies and the humidity, the humidity here uh, living next to the Great Lakes is quite high as well. So lots of sky glow, a lot of light pollution, a lot of light pollution and a reflection nebula do not all go hand in hand very well. So every attempt that I've made to image this nebula, I've been thwarted, including last time when I tried imaging it with this really fantastic 300 millimeter fixed focal length lens uh, that I've been using with my SLT mount. Even there, uh, it would have been a good picture, but I got lazy, I didn't take proper flats, and it uh, cost me. So tonight, I will take another stab at this nebula. I will try shooting it for as long as it's up in the sky, which should be for at least four or five hours from the start time that I started imaging. Uh, I will be shooting in broadband using just a UV IR cut filter, as this is a reflection nebula. And um, I think that's pretty much all I want to say. So I'm going to start off by taking an hour's worth of my UPP DMAT flats. And then I'll do a quick polar alignment, a bit of focusing, and I should be good to go. My name is Chris, and welcome to my channel. I thought it'd be fun to share some footage from my hat cam. This is the process I go through every time I take out my telescope. I keep my shaky pier covered with what is a furniture cover. It's one of those little uh, ottoman covers. Uh, it's uh, just big enough to cover the scope too when I've got it outside. And then, I don't know about you guys, but uh, I have uh, a couple of different uh, pieces of equipment that I've got to dig through before I can get to my main imaging rig. So, uh, I'm, I'm running out of room in the corner here and I'm really weary of trying to get, uh, trying to move my equipment throughout the rest of the house. I think I'm afraid of what my wife would say. So, here we go, unbolting the wedge and the entire rig from the tripod base. Uh, this is unfortunately the heavy part. The whole thing weighs about, uh, what, 40, 45 pounds. So not too, too bad, but uh, can get a little bit dicey in the winter. The slippery stairs. And carrying the whole thing outside and uh, planting it on top of the pier. Now that pier is six feet tall from the ground, but the deck is raised by about a foot and change. So it's not too bad to hoist the... Uh, the whole setup up on top of the platform. The platform itself is um, uh, a piece of uh, of plastic board, so it's one of those fake. Um, <laughs> I couldn't remember the word. PVC board. That's what I was looking for. It's uh, the fake um, plastic boarding you can get. I was using it for. Uh, to make a wedge, actually. So my first homemade wedge was, uh, that was the piece that, uh, that was the actual wedge part. I have since uh, replaced it, obviously, with the Celestron one. But that's the one piece I kept because I have already pre-drilled the three holes for the bolts uh, that uh, secure either the um, Celestron next RSE mount or it's the same bolt size that holds the, the actual wedge because uh, the wedge sits on top of the same tripod. Well, I bolt those down pretty well so uh, that the telescope doesn't go anywhere. Now uh, next part, uh, here I've, I'm using, I only have the one camera, the uh, ASI 294 MC Pro, my main astrophotography camera. So I had been switching it out, I've been using it on my smaller rig. Uh, so here, I'm uh, just dusting it off, making sure that 
sensor plate for the, the covering glass. The glass that covers the sensor is clear. And then uh, putting the camera back onto the back of the imaging train. And when I'm not in use, I'm using just a plastic bag with a rubber band to keep the dust out uh, because uh, I have the whole filter tray sitting off the back of that imaging train, which is awkwardly shaped. And here's my wiring harness. So I used to have a 30 foot long USB cable uh, that I've discovered actually incurs too much noise. So with a cable that long, uh, I had issues with uh, the camera losing signal. Now a longer USB cable is fine if you're just connecting your laptop to your mount. Uh, so I'm still using that 60 foot or 30 foot cable, but it's wound up. But I keep the whole thing closer because now I'm running a much shorter cable. In fact, the same USB cable that came with the ASI camera, or the ZWO camera, uh, which is about six feet to connect the camera independent of uh, the other USB cable that connects the mount, uh, the uh, guide scope, <clears throat> my little USB camera that gives me the nose cam view and some other parts. So uh, here is uh, the latest version of my little UPPD mat. It's cut down to size just to fit on the inside uh, of the uh, main uh, objective there, objective of the corrector plate. Uh, so that I don't have to pin it to the front of the hood. And that's it. That's what I go through every time I go to set up to image. Well, as usually happens, I got a little bit ambitious. Turns out there was some hydrogen alpha data hiding in the background of uh, M78. In fact, M78 is a very cool nebula. It's got parts of a reflection nebula with the star forming region in the center. Uh, there is a dark nebula, which obscures a lot of the stars behind it and creates that really cool um, contrast between the bright star forming regions and the surrounding cloud as well as a hydrogen alpha emission layer which uh, with enough exposure you can start to really appreciate now i did not get enough exposure on the hydrogen alpha although that's something i might revisit in the future uh, there are some wonderful examples of people who have especially capturing this whole region in wider fields of view but uh, for the purposes of this video, what I wanted to show was uh, what you could capture from a Bortle 8 sky. So to that end, uh, this here is uh, my last attempt. So this would have been from uh, February of 2023. In fact, this was, I think, the first image I tried taking with the ZWO camera. So uh, you can see here, I didn't quite know what I was doing. I had some issues with uh, my guiding uh, looks like the image uh, cut off here and there were some frames that were caught with just the top portion while others extended down to the bottom so where they were overlapped I didn't blend that very well um, you know maybe for my first try it wasn't half bad although obviously I wasn't using proper calibration frames I could have used some flats here we've got all sorts of artifacts but that's what uh, M78 would have looked like with uh, 15 second or 15 uh, 180 second frames or 45 minutes worth of capture. So maybe I shouldn't have been too harsh. Uh, this was from my first nights of capture. So this is uh, the first night of data. It was 100 frames uh, with uh, broadband UV IR cut. And uh, it turns out the next night was actually pretty nice. So I put on the dual band filter, so hydrogen alpha and oxygen three, and I ran that for an hour. And then I ran uh, the uh, camera for the rest of the night imaging with the UV IR cut filter for a total of 163 frames. So that's what I ended up getting here. This is 
eight hours worth of total integration time. You can see the full color, but you don't get any of the uh, hydrogen. So there's really no red. It's just the reflection nebula that we're seeing, as well as the dust that's obscuring the background. And then right here, we've got the dual band. So only one hour's worth, and I've got some noise here uh, that I didn't quite calibrate out yet in, in this image um, on that uh, hydrogen alpha. And then combining everything and running a couple of more stretches, we get something like this. As usual, I treat my stars separately. So in this case, I took the best, I think, 20 frames, 22 frames from the uh, UV IR cut broadband data. And I stacked only those stars in order to overlay back into this image. So this is the overlaid stars. Uh, actually, these are the original overlaid stars. And here they are just slightly reduced. So I'm going to play around with this image a little bit more. Uh, and I'm going to post the final image to the end of this video. Um, and again, if you're shooting from a Bortle 8 sky, uh, I hope you can do better than this. I, I honestly do. But uh, in terms of, uh, at a minimum, what could you expect? Uh, I, I think that's kind of representative. So, as always, thanks for watching and clear skies.